Hi guys, Mike here from Job Ready English. Uh, today's video was shot about six, seven weeks ago. We've got loads of great podcasts and interviews to share with you. It's, it's really my fault for being so busy. Marvin Nianyezi is a wonderful man. He also wrote the book International Student Pathfinder and a website by the same name which we will link to in the description below. And in this wide-reaching interview, he is the only uh, person we know of who has written a book specifically targeted at international students. He shares his experience and the experience of his friends, both in this interview and also in the book. We cannot recommend him highly enough. A really lovely guy, super busy as well, really talented, and we were really grateful that he uh, spent a little bit of time with us and we look forward to uh, speaking to him again in the future. Enjoy. Hi Marvin, good to see you. Hi Mike, thank you for having me. No, thank you for joining me. I know that you're a very busy man. Thank you for making the time for us. My pleasure. So, um, really excited about this interview. We've spoken a few times. Um, you're, you're a wonderful man doing great things for the international student community. So, um, Thank you, sir. You're very kind. <laughs> uh, excited to, uh, to, learn, to learn from you and, and, and for, you know, professionally and also from your, your personal experience as an international student. So, um, if, if, let's begin with just tell us tell us about what you currently do. Okay. Yeah, sure thing. So um, I'm a regulatory compliance uh, specialist in banking. Um, I currently work for HSBC, and I've been in this sector for about 14 years. Um, so just a bit of context for uh, some of our students. Uh, regulatory compliance is um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about helping the, uh, the bank to uh, adhere to certain rules and, 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 and regulations about how they should conduct themselves. Um, so the, the banking sector in the UK is heavily regulated. Um, so my role involves advising the bank on, on those, uh, those requirements and, and, and those regulations. Um, for example, in terms of how we ought to treat customers, um, there's lots of rules around that. Um, so to, yeah, to, to put it simply, it's about helping uh, the bank to uh, stay out of trouble from a, a regulatory perspective. And where things maybe go wrong, helping the bank to put those, those things right. That's wonderful. Thank you, and uh, thanks so much for your definition. I don't know about anybody else. I needed that. <laughs> so let's um, let's go back a little bit um, and tell us about being being at university. So mm. finishing up your masters and and getting a job out of university and what that process was like for you. Okay. Um. Maybe to. Yeah. Even just be uh, to provide more context for for your audience. I'll, I'll go back to um, before I uh, the period before I I, um, I did my masters and, and my postgraduate degree. So my under I, so I came to the UK as a, as an international student. Um, I did an undergraduate degree in law at at Cardiff University. And at the time, I, I sort of, my assumption was, you know, all I needed to get into a good graduate career was to, was to go to university, university, complete my degree, and there'd be a, a nice graduate career waiting for me at the, at the end of, of, of that journey. Um, however, that was in my journey, and uh, I think many students have, uh, yeah, have had a similar experience. So I, um, after I finished my undergraduate, I, I did lots of uh, work experience. My work experience was a, was a mix of uh, industry experience, 
that was for roles I was targeting. So I started off targeting the legal sector. So I was looking at commercial law firms, barristers' chambers, um, international banks. That, that was a profile of the sort of jobs I was, I was shooting for. And I had some work experience that was relevant. I had some, you know, some good internships and uh, placements at commercial law firms. But I also did various part-time part-time jobs or temporary jobs, uh, which were, you know, mainly from a financial perspective. Um, so I wasn't necessarily targeting those sectors where I had those those part-time jobs. Um, and I also uh, I also decided to do some postgraduate qualifications to, to help me continue building up my you know building up my CV before I uh, before I eventually entered into a graduate career. So after my undergraduate degree, I I, I went on to do a postgraduate in law, specializing in banking and financial law. Um, and it was only after that that I managed to get into a career within financial services. Yeah, thank you. Um, and thinking about you moving from your bachelor's to your master's and essentially your specializing, mm. um, what, what made you choose the banking industry and and working in regulation. Okay, uh, for me, um, I think that that journey towards a, a role within uh, within uh, regulatory compliance and, and the banking sector was um, I, I was pointed in that direction. Firstly, from what I specialized in. Uh, so when I was at King's College London, which is where I did my 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 first postgraduate um, that got me into uh, the subject and, and and specializing in in banking in the banking sector um, specifically and and as I was doing that I realized I enjoyed it um, I excelled at it so I started to think that actually I I could make a a career for myself in this sector especially if um, enjoying it and, 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 and doing well at it. Um, I also I was, I was fortunate to, to land a, um, an internship at an international development bank um, j just after I'd finished my, uh, my, uh, my postgraduate. So the, the combination of my education and qualification plus my work experience just helped me to focus on on that on the banking industry as, as where I wanted to, to develop my career um, and also after I'd, I'd, I'd sort of uh, finished you know after I'd finished my internship you as you're exposed to this sector through work experience you start to talk to people more you start to find out a bit more about the kind of um, career opportunities that you, you might find in, in that sector so in combination, all those things sort of made me realize that there's lots of opportunities in, in, in banking. Um, and I've, I've been on that path ever since. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, what's, what's been your, what's been the biggest surprises for you working um, either in, in regulatory compliance or just in the banking industry in general? Mm. I would say, I think the first surprise was just how how broad the sector is, and and, and just how many the breadth of career opportunities that you can find within uh, within financial services. So, the financial services you you could break it up into many subsectors, which in themselves are are, are significant. So, for example, you have retail banking, you have commercial banking, you have asset management, you have insurance. Um, all these are, are, are significant sort of subsectors within within the overall 
financial services industry. So you could have a career that w w where you traverse all these um, all these various subsectors if you wanted. So if you're the kind of person who you know you, you enjoy something stimulating, you, you you like change, you like to do something new, you could have a career where you you, you go through more than one subsector. So for example, like myself, I you know I've worked in retail banking, I'm now in commercial banking, so I've been able to um, to have that experience in in, 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 in multiple subsectors. And I think you know for, for students and young graduates that can be quite appealing. But equally if, if you decided you know I'm quite happy within say retail banking and you wanted to carry on within that subsector it's it's you know it's 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 up to you. There's still lots of opportunities within uh, within retail banking for you to to have a fulfilling and um, satisfying long-term career. Then the I think the other se the, the second surprise for me has been how um, depending on the employer that you you eventually work for, just finding out about the opportunities to volunteer or to you know to work for charities um, as, 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 as part of what you do for your job is is very re rewarding so for example my my current employer encourages us to um, to yeah to spend up to two days in a year just volunteering for whatever cause whatever uh, charitable cause you you know is, is is dear to you so it might be um, supporting a local cancer hospice um, or, or mentoring uh, students and, and young people from disad uh, disadvantaged backgrounds um, and, and for me that's, that's something I've taken advantage of of um, you know of, of work with charities like the Princess Trust like um, uh, making the leap which you know for me, I, I I find incredibly rewarding. So those those would be my my sort of two surprises of, of working in this sector. Yeah, lovely. Um, I, I think you reflect similar answers that I've had from other other people working in your profession, and they they really stress the the diversity both of people and opportunities mm. that is maybe not so obvious. Um, go going into that. What for you has been the, the biggest learning curve or the biggest challenges that you faced in your professional career? An interesting um, question. Um, so I, I think for me it would be it, it would be that that initial transition. Every time you go into a new job or you change jobs or go into a new role. There is that initial adjustment that, that, that you go through, sort of learning what your role is and, and, and getting to, to grips with it. Um, and it can be daunting. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've changed roles uh, a number of times over the, the course of my career so far. Some of those roles have been within the same company, uh, whether it's, it's progression upwards or, or slightly different role. And you know that might mean sort of having to learn new products. So, for example, when I moved from retail banking to commercial banking, the the product set I was dealing with was um, was new. It was all a bit more complex. You are having to establish new relationships with your stakeholders. So you're starting from scratch, and that whole process of learning again can be you know it can be quite uh, unnerving but I've found it helps to just remind yourself that you know you're not going to become an expert overnight um, you know just be kind to yourself give it time uh, have reach out to people around you uh, have that you know that 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 support network of, of colleagues or, or people you can uh, call upon to to help you uh, make that transition. 
and then it, it, it won't be as, um, as daunting. Yeah, that's really, um, you made some really excellent points there, particularly about uh, becoming an expert takes time. Um, yeah. the, the daunting nature, and it's very interesting to reflect that back to uh, young people and students when they say, oh, I've not got enough experience or I'm not sure what to do, and you just think, I'll join the club. <laughs> like there's no, there's no magic answer, and um, you know, much, much like yourself, I've had many, many challenges and failures and, and humbling experiences, but they were, they were all very worthwhile as long as I could learn from them, which I always did. So, um, and it's lovely to hear that from you. You're, you're a seasoned professional and you still have that, uh, what I call the, the teachable attitude. So yeah, that's great. Um, I, I'd really like to, if I may, just, just sort of, just to seg away. And um, the, the re how, I, how I first came across you was the fact that you have written a book for international students it is absolutely fascinating to me. This is the only book on Amazon, right, for international students. Um, I think, I can't speak about the States, but definitely in the UK. And I would love you to tell this story of just where did this come from? Like, what was the inspiration and the process? Because, um, yeah, I just, I just love to learn that um, from you, Marvin. Yeah, sure thing. Um... So the the inspiration to to, to, to write the book, um, which yeah is called International Student Pathfinder, um, just it, it really came across from my my own personal journey as as an international student um, trying to to make the most of your education. Um, for yeah, you, you probably realize this, but it costs an international student, approximately about uh, 22,000 pounds a year um, at, at the moment, uh, including your tuition, uh, your, 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 your living expenses, etc. Um, and, 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 and that's, you know, that's a significant investment that you've made or, or your family are making towards your future. And when I talked to my peers and other international students, when I, when I spoke to my peers and other international students who have been on a similar journey, we, we often remark about what we wish we had known before we started this journey. We, we, you know, we, we talked a lot about you know, how much we didn't know when we, we embarked on, on, on this journey to you know, as international students, and I suppose because I've, I've yeah, I've, I've, I've been here as a student at both undergraduate and postgraduate level, it's it's made me appreciate all the more the, the kind of hurdles that international students face in in trying to get into into graduate careers, and so it it, it, it baffled me for a long time to think that you know for a uh, uh, you know, a billion pound industry that international students represent, that there wasn't that tailored guidance or advice for international students to help them on their journey, to help them maximize their, their education. And that really was the, the, the motivation for writing the book. And I spoke to you know, my colleagues from very, you know, different countries, from you know, whether it's China, India, Ghana, um, Kenya, we we all had a similar experience, and we're all lacking the same the same tailored uh, guidance and, and and knowledge about how we ought to, uh, to to make that journey. How we ought to, you know, make certain choices about what university you go to, what um, what course to choose, how to get into careers, how to gain work experience. Um, so it's, 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 it's a combination of those experiences that, that motivated me to say, actually, I'll, um, 
I should put something out there that, that will help the next generation of students uh, navigate their own career paths with, with a bit more ease. Um, and I, I, I felt it was important to reflect the journey of other students. So instead of international students getting advice from you know, careers advisors who might not experience the kind of challenges that you know, students will face, I wanted them to hear from other international students who have been on that journey, who have eventually got into uh, good uh, graduate careers, and then them sharing their insights, their advice that, that will help the next generation of students. Yeah, it's it's just um, it's a, it's a phenomenal thing that you've done. I just ordered my copy today. I'm looking forward to reading it. It's been so busy recently. I, I had it popped up on the screen. I thought I must buy that, and then a month passed by, uh, but I popped up today and I've I've ordered that. And I, I think it's. You're so right, and the purpose of having this podcast um, as well is the same thing. It's just the opportunity to, as well, to share, to hear other people's success stories, but not as a very short, I've seen it a lot, done a lot, but it's, it's really done as a very short selling tool. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I got a job through this company, and it was super great, and you should buy their stuff, and but there's no real actionable advice, there's no tips, there's no, you know, anything. Whereas, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, the, the book is fabulous and it's just about offering that longer form guidance of just, you know, um, exactly like you're saying, like a pathfinder. Like you've already trodden that path. If I wanted to be, to be like you, to follow your path, then, you know, the easiest, ultimately, you know, success to, to a large extent, most of the time is about imitation it's about right. finding somebody who's done what you've done not copying them exactly but kind of getting that guidance being teachable and um yeah it's just it's just wonderful that you've done that and there is there is a link to the book below in the description and on our resources thank you for that story thank you um so let's kind of let's sort of come back and I wanted to talk to you about um, English, the importance of English fluency, uh, where you work, and your own personal challenges with communicating with people uh, in the UK. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so, so I'd say fluency in, in, in English is, is, is definitely very important in, in the sector that I, I work in, um, and I think it, it, this equally applies to graduate, graduate schemes or graduate careers in, um, in other sectors. Um, and, and, and for international students, I'll just say, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not just about your fluency in, in English that's important. I think it's, it's really about your ability to communicate um, uh, w with confidence. And, you know, to, to be able to do that, I think it's, it's, it's more than just fluency. I think it's, it's being, uh, being able to uh, sort of understand how people communicate in, in a professional setting. Um, and there's, there's a lot about communication that is, it, 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 you, you get it when you absorb the, the cultural setting you're in. You, you, you understand all those those nuances that are not necessarily taught, those cultural references that, you know, mannerisms, um, the, 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 there's a lot that, that you pick up that, you know, you, you won't be taught this in, in, in school. But, so for example, um, some international students will come from cultures where communication is very direct, but if you went into a, a British setting and you try to communicate in exactly the same way, you might come across as rude. So you might not pick up on those, those subtle distinctions if you had no exposure to, say, working in the UK. So my, um, you know, my advice to, to, to international students is 
you know, take advantage of opportunities at university to you know get involved get involved in uh, extracurricular activities, um, take on part-time uh, part jobs, because as you get involved in those things, you start to pick up on 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 on, on this, you know, this cultural uh, references or uh, ways of presenting yourself in a professional setting that will help you in your career. It will help you to be a bit more confident when you're communicating. you you know, you won't feel as though there's some things you don't uh, you don't get, or you won't you, you won't feel as though your uh, some of your communication is getting lost in translation. So my advice to yeah to international students is build your confidence by you know uh, being as involved as you can in extracurricular activities and, and, and part-time jobs, and that will help you develop that confidence in communicating very effectively yeah that's that's wonderful thanks Marvin and I, I think two, two things that you reminded me of is number one they're not going to learn fluency in a book um, it's going to be through that sort of battle hardened experience of uh, low-level embarrassment and then uh, you know uh, learning from that and the second thing that the directness it kind of makes me laugh because I can remember um, uh, a few a few people that I've worked with or students that when I was a little bit heavier than I am now, they say, oh, you look like you've put on some weight. And I was, <laughs> it's really, so I was like, did you just say that? You can't say that. And they're like, why not? Like, my mum would say that to me. And I was like, mm. oh, I get it. Like, it's just, you don't even know that that's rude. Like, here, you can't say that. And they were really bemused because they were like, but I'm saying it because I'm showing you that I care about you. Um, and, and, and some people might, you know, if, for example, you and me having, because we know people from different cultures, we, we might understand that actually what they mean is, is this, or they don't mean it in a, you know, with, with any malice. But for someone who maybe doesn't see that, uh, this person is doesn't mean it in a bad way. They might not see that, you know, that they might not get get it in in the same way, and then it puts you at loggerheads with with, with that person for, you know, for the wrong reason. Yeah. And that's only one one example where you know certain things don't translate across cultures automatically. Um, so if we just sort of cycle back um, to your uh, banking experience, what's, um, what's, what, what's a big misconception about uh, the banking industry that people tend to have, maybe when they're initially talking to you or sort of finding out some information about banking, what do you find is something that they really sort of, where they haven't got their facts right? Mm. One misconception that I see with um, uh, many uh, sort of new grads who are looking to, to get into the sector is they often assume that you need specific qualifications to, to get into to get into the industry. So, for example, they might think, "Oh, I need a degree in in in, in banking to, to to get a job in banking," or, or maybe I need a degree in, in economics to to get into banking um, and, and, and people forget that we have graduate schemes that are looking to attract uh, graduates from, from different disciplines um, you know whether you've uh, studied accountancy or, or, or IT all these disciplines are actually welcome um, to you know if, if, if you're looking to, to get into the industry um, and I also think students maybe don't appreciate that within a bank you will have um, different departments such as you know you, you have your IT department, you'll have a legal department, you'll have a marketing uh, uh, function, and all these will 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 value students who maybe have a uh, whose qualification is in something other than 
banking. Um, so yeah, that, I, I think that is a, a common misconception I see with, with graduates. What would you say of the, and this could apply to, to banking or, or really just to regulatory compliance, um, what would you say are the, the three most important skills and um, why? Well, that's a good one. Um, I, I think the first one would be uh, what I've, uh, I've kind of uh, touched upon it, which is your willingness to, to continue learning. So something that has helped me in my career is, is kind of uh, seeing myself as a, as a constant work in progress. Um, and, and what that means is your skill set continues to grow throughout your career. So the industry that I'm in is, uh, is, is subject to um, constant change. It might be from sort of uh, uh, political or, or uh, regulatory changes in, in, within the sector or because of the emergence of, of new technology. Um, so there's, there's a, a constant change cycle, which, you know, sometimes means that you're, you're having to, to learn lots of new things. You, you're always learning new things. Um, so I think it, it, when you have that curiosity to learn, when you have that willingness, that, that, that teachableness to, to, to always be refining your skills through uh, continual learning, your less you'll find the the change process less less daunting um i think the 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 other uh, quality which is, uh, is 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 really important is 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 to do with uh, networking and um and relationship building um very often in in in, in my career you're you're involved in projects that involve stakeholders from other disciplines, from other departments. So your ability to, you know, to understand other people's perspective, to, uh, to you know, to, to, to work towards, to collaborate and to work towards a shared, a shared goal is, is a very important um, way of working. So you need that, you need that in your career and um, I'd also say, on reflection, when I look back at my own career, I can see the the impact of relationships I've built from my university days. Uh, so, for example, um, many of my tutors back at uni in, in, for my undergraduate degree have continued to be my my mentors uh, throughout my career. So that that has been. A relationship that has carried on, you know, uh, has carried on after university. Um, I can point to friendships that I developed, you know, a long time ago for, for my university days that I still rely on now. So those relationships have helped me in relation to my career in, in, in terms of you know, professional advice, but also uh, from a, a personal perspective. Um, so yeah, just quite simply, um, you will achieve a lot more collaboratively than, than you can by yourself. So relationship building for me is, is, is you know, it's, it's up there as, as, as one of those attributes that, that will help you in the long term. Um, and then the third one is, is really resilience, your ability to to persevere through adversity. I, I say this mindful that lots of graduates today will, you know, will be facing a very tough uh, economic environment. Um, you know, lots of uh, jobs have vanished because of the, the, the pandemic and, and, and the recession that, that most countries are in. And graduates just need to be prepared for the fact that you might get more rejections before you get that that offer um, for graduate position, and it's, it's 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 very difficult taking those knocks. You know, you, you apply for hundreds of of jobs and you're getting hundreds of rejections. 
so that ability to to bounce back to not you know to not take it personal to to keep persevering is is really important um as as as, as students try to students and graduates try to get into their their careers but also throughout life so those would be my my top three willingness to learn um your your relation your, your capacity to build relationships and and resilience yeah that's that's wonderful i suppose two points that i'd um, expand upon was number one you talking about the need for mentorship and coaching um, I, I as well as you have been really privileged to and to still have some really wonderful mentors um, mm -hmm. just um, just really lovely people who really want nothing from me and they're essentially they're just a bit further down the path from me a bit, a bit smarter a bit more successful a bit more knowledgeable sometimes maybe just a bit more compassionate a bit kinder mm -hmm. Um, and the the second thing was um, about resilience just being so important because essentially it's it's really difficult to fail if you don't give up. Um, you know, it's it's sort of and it's really difficult to have that mindset. And I'm reminded of um, one of my favourite writers, a marketer called Seth Godin, and he just he writes mini blogs every day, and he just said, just remember, a rejection is. A rejection is the message, the application, the piece of paper, the video. The rejection yeah. is not you. You are not the per they don't know you. Absolutely. Um, but you know, we all have those days sometimes when we get back and we just go, you know what, I just want to uh, take an evening off. And yeah. I think, you know, it's so important to just know knowing our own limits. Uh, I've certainly had it where I just go, you know what, I really just want to watch something nice on TV, eat some ice cream and just tune it out for a few hours and then come back fresh tomorrow. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and so just talking about it, the point you made about um, uh, a resilience just reminds me of who one of the other reasons why I wrote the book. Um, because some of the things you won't hear about as as an international student, or even as a as a, as a graduate who uh, is from the UK, is you won't hear much about the fact that getting a job after uni is not so straightforward. So there is there is not a lot out there that is preparing graduates to deal with the emotional toil um, or, or or the mental challenges that that you face after graduating and you still can't get the kind of job that you know that, that that you've spent a lot of time preparing for so some of the things that i cover in in in, in my book is, is is how how to deal with those challenges how to deal with that um you know your six months after graduation six months or, or even two years after graduation and you're still not in in the kind of job that you wanted to get into how do you deal with that what, what what sort of resources can you find to help you you know deal with uh, with with that you know the, the, the emotional turmoil that that, that, that you go through um, so yes you, you know resilience is is, is is really up there as, as something that is very important but you might not students and graduates might not hear much about how you build that resilience. Mm. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful point. What, what tips would you give for students who are watching this and they're wanting to either break into the banking industry or break into regulatory compliance? Mm. Um, the, the, the first tip I'd say is, you know, for, for, for graduates who are applying to the industry, and it's not just the banking industry, but in any industry or, or company you're, you're applying for, is do your research. Find out as much as possible about the kind of industry that you're, you're entering in. Um, research as much as possible about the company that, 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 that you're applying to. Uh, nothing gives uh, you know, an interviewer 
when he's uh, uh, when he has a, a candidate in front of him um, as much excitement as as hearing that 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 applicant talk about the kind of work his company has done being very specific about you know why they are interested in that company because as an interviewer it you know it's it, it's flattering it you know it, it, it makes you think that oh this this candidate in front of me is you know they really want this job they're really interested in this industry they've done their research they understand what it's like it's it almost makes you come across um as though you you have that detailed knowledge you you're already in you already understand what it's like to work in that industry uh, or, or the kind of things you'll be dealing with uh, in that company um, so that would be my 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 first step really just do your research uh, into the company and, and 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 the industry you're interested in then the, the second tip is it sounds very basic but it's practice 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 for any uh, interview, let's just say for example, any interview that you have lined up, do lots of mock interviews. You know, sit down with, um, it could be your friends, it could be uh, family members, it could be your peers. Just go through a, a scenario, go through a mock scenario of what your interview is likely to be like. Um, if you research on the internet, you, you can sort of see the potential questions that, that could come up. Um, just really go through those, have examples from your own experience, drawing you know, specific uh, instances or illustrations that can help you show that you have certain competencies. So those soft skills, if say you're talking about leadership, um, you want to be able to point to experiences you've had at university or through jobs that you've done, where you're, you're showing leadership potential or you're showing your ability to communicate um, with, with stakeholders from various backgrounds. The more you practice before your, your interview, the more polished your, your, your final interview will be. The more you'll come across as, as um, a, a, a well-polished applicant. Um, so I, I really emphasize that point, you know, practice as much as possible as you're applying to jobs. Then the, I think that the, 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 the final tip is, uh, is along the, the lines that we've been talking um, about resilience, which is, you know, just have that patience, just have, uh, you know, prepare yourself for the, the applying for jobs. You know, it might take you longer than, than you initially wanted, um, but don't give up. Don't, uh, don't take it personal. If you get rejections from a uh, job application, try to find out if you can get some feedback from, uh, say, from your interviewers. Try to find out if there's something that you can do to, you know, to, to help refine your your, your your interviewing skills, maybe it's something on your CV. Constantly learn from whatever rejections you have or whatever bad experience you have and use it to propel yourself uh, for the next interview. So the, yeah, th 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 those would be my, 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 my tips now. Yeah, uh, brilliant tips. You really can't, you really can't over prepare. And um, even even as a coach, just say, look, just just pick up your phone and record yourself. You know, we're absolutely we're blessed with so much wonderful technology that's basically free. And um, to really go in under prepared and you know not have done your research is is also you know sometimes candidates must be honest with themselves, as you described so eloquently. You know, if you, if you go into an interview and you're you're under prepared you didn't research, you didn't do your homework, then you have to be honest and say, you know, did you really want it? Mm -hmm. And I, I think to sort of illustrate those points, I'll, I'll just use an example from uh, at the time when I was uh, completing my, my, my MBA at, at Cranfield. Um, 
my peers, so the people in my cohort, we we helped each other prepare for uh, for interviews. Um, one of my, my my good friends was applying to, to Amazon for the you know the equivalent of the, the graduate program, and he was initially rejected, but he didn't give up. He he kept on. Um, so he had to wait for a period of time before he could apply again, but after he applied again, he still went through lots of mock interviews with, uh, you know, w w within uh, with his uh, with his peers, and we were all honest in our feedback. You know, we 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 helped him with the things that we felt he had to improve, and it kind of it can't come across maybe as being harsh. we you know we're, we're very specific with our feedback. we you know, picking on every little thing that we saw he had the potential to improve because we wanted him to, you know, to have every chance of success. And second time around, he got through and he's now in a, you know, great career with, you know, with Amazon, which is, you know, one of the, the leading companies globally. But he had to persevere. He, you know, he, he practiced loads of times. Um, and eventually he, he, he got in. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that story. And I guess my final question is, we spoke about this briefly before, just recently I've, tr I've been trying to ask people who have come onto the podcast and share their successful experiences. You know, as you spoke about, you, your purpose of providing the book is really to say, oh, if I, if I was to do this all again, this is what I'd do is. And um, I guess I'd ask the same question to you, which is, if you were to provide some sort of just fairly, you know, simple step-by-step -step framework, you know, starting from nothing to going through to a job, and you know, feel free to, to relate it to the book. And what what would you say if somebody just said, "Look, can you just really just break it down to me in a couple of minutes? Like, what the, what's the steps that I'd have to go through to go from like zero to job?" Mm. Uh, tricky one in terms of sort of narrowing it down to uh, specific steps that, 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 that would take you from sort of where they are to, to getting a job. But my, the, the underlying, you know, a, a very common theme to, to, excuse me, to the reason why I wrote the book was most myself and my my peers, we all wished we had had uh, graduate and careers advice much earlier in our journey. So instead of getting to your final year, you're about to graduate and you're finding out all these things that you should have done, we wished we had found out about that at the start of, 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 of the journey. Um, so in in, in writing my book, I wrote it for uh, students who are on that journey. I plotted it along those timelines. What do you need to know at specific times in as you're on that journey? So from being a, uh, say, you're just completing your, your A-levels, you're, you're starting to apply to UK universities, at that point in time, what do you need to know and what actions do you need to be taking that will help you eventually get into a good graduate career. And then after your, your first year, after your second year, you know, along those, uh, those, those, those timelines, what are the actions that you need to be taking to help you eventually get into a successful graduate career? And a lot of this uh, in terms of the, the tips, the advice, the specific actions uh, students need to be taking uh, a lot of this is is, is, is explored in the book, um, and I think it, it 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 prepares it helps prepare students from much earlier on in the process to to be in a strong position to have a competitive advantage by the time they actually apply for, for uh, graduate roles, um, and I, I I think taking those actions much earlier rather than sort of getting to the end of your university education after you've forked out thousands of, 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 of pounds in, 
in your education and, and, and thinking, oh my God, I, um, you know, I, I haven't made the most of it. I, you know, I'm not going to realize the uh, a return on, on what has been a, a very expensive investment. Um, so that those are kind of the the, the tips and, and, and the summary I'll give to, 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 to students out there. Um, but I would also say this, that, you know, for those who are um, at a more progress stage in their careers, maybe they've, you know, they, they've finished university and are thinking, oh, I haven't done lots of these things. I don't have any work experience. It's not too late. Uh, there's, there's, still, there's, there's still a lot that you can do to help you eventually get into a graduate career. Um, but like myself and, 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 and the, my peers, the other international students I interviewed in, in, in writing the book, we, there is a lot that we can share that will help students and graduates much earlier in, in, in their journeys. Yeah, thanks Marvin. I think that's, that's great advice and um, yeah, definitely earlier is best. Well, that brings us to the end of the interview. Um, I, I think just just kind of building upon what you said, probably what we'll, we'll try and do on on the website is probably provide some kind of um, summary of the book, just so we can have something just to give, you know, just some little snippets, and then, you know, we'll have a link through so they can come and obviously get all the good stuff in the book. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you also for the uh, wonderful work you're doing for international students in this space. Thanks, Mark.